Uh, dear colleagues, uh, I would like first to thank for this kind invitation, and I'm really pleased to be here to get today. Uh, I know we are a little bit delayed with the time, so I will try to be uh, short in this uh, presentation. This is um, work, of, uh, research done by my colleague Diana Neducin and myself and uh, this is, this paper deals with large housing estates in uh, eastern europe and today i will show you the two examples from novi sad for those who are not familiar with uh, the city of novi sad it is the uh, capital city of vojvodina northern part of serbia and um, the city that in past decades faced with the serious transformation in the sense of uh, housing estates so uh, at the beginning i will just give you a short uh, reminder about uh, what actually we mean under the large or high density housing estate those are usually a um, group of buildings with at least 2000 housing units and most of them are built after the uh, Second World War in the second half of the 20th century, and those those estates are usually built under the postulates of um, the Athens Charter, with a lot of public spaces, uh, sport fields, and playgrounds, and abundance of different kind of greenery. And uh, also, what is specific for those kind of estates is the separation of functions. Uh, in the socialist times. In this, oops, sorry, sorry. Something is wrong. I don't see the the. Okay, it's okay now. Um, in the socialist times, those housing estates um, are uh, specific in Central and Eastern Europe countries, and uh, were developed with an aim to resolve some kind of problems in housing to resolve housing crisis and to provide good and uh and uh, flats on reasonable costs in the time of very rapid urbanization that uh, those cities faced with um, in those times but after the the collapse of the communism uh, some consequences of that low cost constructions faced with um, faced people faced with in those um, housing estates most of problems were uh, neglected or deferred maintenance of those large housing estates and unfortunately consequences of that we are facing also in nowadays of course when those uh, housing units were built uh they they were glorified because of the quick possibilities for very quickly and cost effectively dealing with the problems of housing especially after the second world war and, and uh second half of the 20th, 20th century and uh, most of those housing conditions were good for for that times but as i already mentioned some problems occurred especially um, after the process of privatization of those housing units most of the problems are that physical downgrading of of uh, those housing estates the the second problem is also that because uh, of unification of that housing is those housing estates uh, most of them are very uh unmemor like unmemorable buildings and unmemorable places for for visitors for for inhabitants or for those who are interested in living in those um areas but we still have to be uh aware that those housing estates are uh, generally uh most most of uh, housing stock uh, especially in some areas of Novi Sad and also many, many other cities in CE regions. Here, I will just uh, show you some examples of those areas 
called Limani uh, during the building of those areas and also Novonasele area. And here you can see how those buildings and those areas, those neighborhoods looked like uh, during the end shortly after the construction. And here you can see that um, most of those buildings are very similar. And here are nowadays. Uh, after the collapse of the communism uh, and after the privatization, more than 80% of those housing estates became private, which of course causes some uh, additional problems. Uh, on the one hand, that was uh, a good process, the, the, the positive process of privatization because of the uh, emergence of um, intensive housing uh, market. But on the other side, most of those uh, inhabitants who, who privatized those flats for very low prices, faced with the situation that they are not capable to, to uh, keep those flats in good conditions. Um, majority of those inhabitants didn't have any kind of idea that keeping investments in those flats that became their own now uh, will we'll keep the, the level of the prices of those flats and that this is investing in, in keeping those flats will, will bring them some, uh, some uh, positive effects. Uh, this is this is the one, some newly pictures newly taken pictures of Limani area and here are some uh, some negative effects that I already mentioned uh, I already mentioned that uh, maintenance was very uh, neglected also that uh, concept of ownership uh, is not uh, accepted by homeowners in always in a good manner they they didn't uh, accept that with all responsibilities they have to face with after the privatization and also as i already mentioned that uh, the homeowners didn't acknowledge that fact that uh, the value of their flats will be increased in case they're keeping their in good or at least in some uh, proper condition uh very shortly i will show you the two examples of those areas with large housing estates in novi Sad that i already mentioned and that uh, we we also uh, presented within this cost project uh limani area that i already mentioned that, and i showed you some uh examples some photos from that area uh, very very nice area, very nicely located area close to the river Danube, very close to the city center, and the area that is originally built from 1950s to late 1980s. And originally the idea was that area is uh, planned for living of um, inhabitants, uh, mostly academic inhabitants who are working in, in that kind of um, uh that kind of areas uh what is also interesting to to mention is that uh this area is constructed in prefabricated systems and what is also interesting to say is that area faced with very few reconstructions of originally built houses on the contrary, here you can see one more photo. On the contrary, this, the second neighborhood that we researched called Grbavica, uh, also developed and erected uh, after the 1950s and named after the Grbavica neighborhood in Sarajevo, from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, this is the area that was originally built mostly for, for industrial workers and now this is the area that faced with in past 20 years with a lot of urban transformation a lot of uh, old area with with single family houses was transformed and 
Now that area looked like completely different that originally planned and originally erected um, during the second half of the 20th century. On the contrary from the Limani area and uh, also Novonasel area, the area with large housing estates that uh, faced with very, very few transformation, the Grbavica neighborhood faced with a lot of transformation in, in uh, bad sense of that word, because nowadays this is very, uh, this is the area with uh, very increased density of housing, very few green areas, very few open areas for some um, sport, playground, sport or playgrounds, sports centers or playgrounds. And unfortunately, this is area, although the prices are increased and although this is area very close to the city center, this is not area which is um, developed in the good sense of quality house. So here you can see how, how this area looks like now. And uh, as we heard yesterday from Professor Lojanica, uh, in the second half of the 20th century, we knew how to build large housing estates. And now we are facing with some problems. We don't know why we made those problems for us, ourselves. We are facing with the lack of children playgrounds, we are facing with a lack, lack of greenery, with, with a lack of um, parking places. And it looks like that we really need to reconsider ourselves as an architect, as an urban planners, as a sociologist, etc., and to find a way how we can uh, deal with the problems that we made for our housing estates nowadays. Thank you. And uh, of course, if you have any questions, we can answer now, or of course, we can discuss later.